Okay, so this is check your understanding for topic 8.2, which was connecting position, velocity, and acceleration using integration. So it's really important that we understand that. It's important that we understand acceleration, how they all fit in with derivatives. Um, put the derivative position is velocity, the derivative velocity is acceleration, the second derivative position is acceleration, all those things. We need to remember that, which we've already learned. And now we're adding integration into the mix. For a particle moving along the x-axis with a velocity given by this expression, the particle at position at, at, is at position x equals 2 at time 4. So in other words, x of 4 is 2, or, and you can use s or x for position. Depends on what we're doing. At time, is the particle slowing up or slowing, speeding up or slowing down? So v of 4 equals... <clears throat> 1 plus the sine of 64 over 2, 2 sine of 64 over 2, which is 1 plus 2 times the sine of 32, and we live in radian mode, and so we've got 1 plus 2 sine 32, which is a positive number. That's all I care about, is a positive or is a negative. It's too hard for me to tell, so I just use the calculator real fast. So then I need A. So A of T equals derivative of 1 is 0. So derivative of this is going to be 2 cosine of T squared over 2 times the derivative of the inside 2T. So that becomes a of 4 equals 4 times 4, because 2 times 2 is 4, and there's t. Whoa, that blurry blurred. So I just rewrote this as 4t times cosine times cosine of 32. That's going to be the same. And... So I'm going to end up with 16 cosine 32, which is also positive. And so, speeding up or slowing down. Speeding up. V of 4 and A of 4 have the same sign. Slowing down when the signs are different. So if they're both, so they're pushing each other or they're pushing against each other. So this is slowing down, this is speeding up, this is speeding up. My fingers are kind of stuck. Anyway, okay, find all the times in the interval when the particle changes directions just by your answer. So the particle changes directions when the velocity is equal to zero and the sign changes. So I need to know v of t equals zero. So negative one half equals the sine of a mess. So Sine is one half, um, either at 30 or 60. So sine at 30, no 60, no, sine, sine, 30, 30 degrees, which is pi six. It's negative one half, sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrants. So it's negative one half um, at, so pi six, Which is 7 pi 6 and 11 pi 6. Yeah, those are the two. So, so t squared over 2 needs to equal 7 pi 6 and from 0 to 3. So, We'll deal with that when we come to it. So this becomes 
times again before my 2t squared equals 7 pi over 3. t equals the square root of 7 pi over 3. This is about 7, by the way. Square root of 7 is less than 3. So 2.707. Um, I'm just going to leave it like this, though. And then the other one, which would just be 11 over 3 on the square root. is bigger than 3. So this ends up being bigger than 3. So I don't use it. Okay. So there it is. There's our critical point. So we just need to check and make sure it's just signs there. So it's 2.7. So the sign, what's the answer at 2? Right, something on the right of it. Velocity at two. It's positive. And so at three, let's go two point eight. Negative. Okay, so yes. So it changes signs at this number. So because V of Terrible. And changes signs Okay. Find the position of the particle at time equals zero, which means this one I'm going to integrate. I'm going to take the interval. So times zero, I was told to get this piece of information. So two and four. Wait, I did this backwards. That will make it easier for me. Four is the one I'm using. Two is what I get. I want zero. Okay, and then let me calculate for adding this one out for me. I've been meaning to put this in the whole time, so I'm just going to put it in now. So there it is. I should have had it in there a long time ago. It would have made this way easier. Right? Let me show you. V at 4. Whoops. In radium mode, what did I do wrong? Oh my goodness. Four squared is not 64.
I'm glad I went back. And so the second clip. Then math eight, the derivative. Oops. At four. Also negative, luckily. I have to change my words. Just my math. Okay. Da, 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 da. That part's fine. Then we go to plus math nine from four to zero. Up by one. Okay. I need to push the particle. By the total distance the particle travels. So total distance interval from zero to three of V of T. This will give me the displacement. I want total distance. So that means absolute value. Calculator. Math nine zero two three Math I think no nope. num ABS absolute value alpha trace y one Okay, and that's it. Total distance, absolute value. Well, this really was, I should have been using the calculator the whole time. It's done much faster. It's okay. A particle travels in a straight line with a constant acceleration of 4 meters per second. Per second. Constant acceleration of 4 meters per second per second. At time t, the velocity is 16 meters per second. V of 3 equals 16 meters per second. How far does a particle travel during the time interval when the velocity increases from 4 meters per second to 24 meters per second? So it's a very interesting situation, don't you think? How will we find this answer? Let me think about this for just a minute. Think about it. So we do need to find V of t. This is an initial condition. We know this. So we know that the integral of A of t dt is equal to v of t, right? So let's figure that out. So the integral of that is going to be 4t plus some c. Figuring out what c is, 4 times 3 plus c equals 16. So c equals 4, so this is 12. So c is 12, 4. And so V of T equals 4T plus 4. Okay. And we want to know the time interval when the velocity increases from 4 to 24. So what we are looking for is V of T equals 4 when t is 0, right, because that would be 4. But we also need to know v of t is 24, and so that one I might want to do the math. So 24 equals 4t plus 4, so 20 equals 4t, and t is 5. Okay, that one was easier. I could do that in my head, but not this. 
But if you're wondering, I did do this math in my head for this. Okay, then now we do the interval. The interval from zero to five of V of T, VT equals V of T. So the interval is two T squared plus four T evaluated, evaluated from zero to five, which gives me two times five squared plus four times five minus zero, zero. Plugging zero is giving me zero on both of those, which is equal to 50 plus 20 or 70. There you go. All right. We'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great day.